strain on society. Oh, I'm sorry. I scared my dog. <laughs> yeah, I was like this strange. close to wearing the same sweater vest. Oh, for real? This yeah, is like a, I, I love just like sitting over there. I was like, damn, I forgot the vest. I love my sweater vest. Everybody, welcome to Strain on Society. Um, I'm Paul E. Hendricks. The E stands for extraordinary. Or Eric, if you're uh, if you want to be a dick uh, about it. Today we have a, a wonderful guest. Well, he hasn't actually guessed it yet so he's a wonderful guy i don't know how he is as a guest but uh his name is mr jesse lee um he's known throughout austin as the uh man with the afro you thought i was gonna say something else didn't you gotcha lead singer and lead guitar uh player technically only guitar player for the band day eater an austin rock and roll staple and uh as you noticed when he put his hands up uh, he's missing one. How could he be such an amazing guitar shredder? I don't know. I took guitar lessons when I was a kid. I still can't play. I have one sitting in my office right now. And uh, Jesse's over here uh, shredding like nobody's business. And um, Dater is awesome. And I'll put out all your information so people can check it cool. out. Um, but anyway, introduce yourself, Jesse. Hey, what's up? You know, Jesse Lee, um, best one handed guitar player you might ever meet. And I'm um, really excited. Yeah, to be here. I don't even think that. Can I, I'm interrupting you already, but yeah. I don't even think that's fair because you fucking shred, bro. So it's not. It's not like you shred for a dude with one hand. You just shred <laughs> as a guitar player. To me, that's and that's me being honest. And uh, Thanks. they played at a, uh, at, a, at a a fundraiser for us one time at, a, at the little Darlin in South Austin. And um, yeah, I mean, you guys have been playing a lot and, and been traveling around the the great country of Texas <laughs> because it seems as big as one. But I mean, as of late, you guys have it. But you were before. You guys have been touring, like uh, like doing a lot of shows. So that's pretty good. Yeah, but, we were. Actually, um, I'm sorry. Get back to your introduction. We I, I, I don't even know why I interrupted uh, you. There's really not a whole bunch of me to say about myself. Uh, that's pretty much what I do. Anything that's not really the rock and roll and the music is not really that important. You don't fuck, you don't fuck with it. Well, then in that case, of course, you fucks with uh, you fucks with the cannabis. Then I do. I got my own. Yeah, little, I keep, I've little. heard your band. You can't play that kind of uh, <laughs> music without smoking uh, some of the herbal blessings. There's a lot of delay there. I mean, in the music. Oh yeah. 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 Well, look at your shirt and background for God's sakes. Jesus. Thanks. Trying to I try. Oh, yeah. I made the effort to make this look good. I'm like, I'm not gonna look like I'm sitting on my toilet. Uh well that that would have been entertaining. I'm trying to <laughs> I hooked this thing up to this table out here. It broke the other day, so now it's like a big black penis just hanging in front of my fucking face. In the dangling, wind. dangling. And so my homie Jimmy brought me another uh a mic stand the other day that I just I, was, I decided this is all stupid this the, the the boom arm and all that and so it's just a desktop mic stand a real nice one too um, but my microphone because I'm using a a, a like uh, plug and play mic is too thick and it doesn't fit in it so I got to get a new um, <laughs> mic holder is that the correct term that, I used to be singing good. many bands. Right. Oh, shit. I just knocked the shit out of it, too. Yeah, so that's what I've been working with out here. And I was going to just use my my AirPods are pretty um, pretty good as a speaker also. But as I mentioned before we started this, I left those in my Suburban. I uh, I got a flat tire this morning on my way to therapy. It, it started to mess up my whole day. Here's why no therapy is working, because it didn't. Um, it didn't mess up. I, I cursed a lot. Uh, but then, um, but it, it doesn't matter. I, don't, I, 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 even if I'm in a, a sore mood, I don't think I am. Jesse was supposed to do this interview last week. Oh yeah, we'll and he canceled on me. So then Paul was a joyful, joyful person. There were no flat tires that day. In fact, I was uh, I barely put a shirt on just to do the interview. <laughs> I'm uh, pretty sure I wasn't wearing pants, but I was really high anyway. But anyway, I'm glad that you're here. I've asked you, I asked you months ago to do this. Um, yeah, we've been looking. And here's one of the. Shit. Yeah, I've been wanting you to do it. And here's the kind of the funny thing is uh, in doing this is there's a lot of people I want, and I want particularly people uh, looking for more like people of color and women entrepreneurs and all that, and women and, and female smokers, and just a different group of people. 
because I think cannabis is is a big bridge between all of us. You know what I mean? Like cannabis brings us together. I, our election just showed that, like how many states, including one of the Dakotas, legalized cannabis. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a it's not a red or blue thing. It's most of the country now believes in cannabis legalization. Yeah. Um, and so, but a lot of people have jobs where they can't like. Uh, they don't want to be online getting high or some of them that are entrepreneurs and business owners, they have a board of directors that they're on and they have to get approval and they haven't been able to. Um, so uh, I'm glad that you were able to do it. And I, I had you on the list from the get go and I started this stupid ass show. Um, so I am super, I'm super thankful and glad that you're here, man. Same. I think this is cool, man. I, I've never known awesome. anybody to run a legit, like uh, like podcast or like web, uh, webcasting. And for the most part, most of my day, I sit around and we'll listen to stuff like that all day. I put on like true crime podcasts and we'll right on this and that. And it's like, why, why don't I know somebody who's doing this already? Yeah. Well, you Ooh, know, it's, uh, I've had podcasts before over the last decade. Uh, and the last one I had when I was here, I moved here and a friend of mine who was a stand up comic, um, John Toll lived here and we'd known each other since we played in bands in the mid nineties in Cleveland, Cleveland hardcore even. Um, yeah. and we had a podcast and when that was over, I just, people have asked me, uh, over the years to do them. And I only, I, I wanted to do one, but I only wanted to do one that I really, really wanted to do and that I didn't have, I didn't want to partner with anybody else or, or I just, I don't want to compromise. I don't want to, I'll just do it on my own. And if it's good, it's good. If it's not, I take all the responsibility. And during <laughs> the pandemic, when it started, I just started doing these live Facebook videos with giving strain reviews uh because my homie was uh at the time wasn't a smoker and so when he would get uh all these different strains in uh i was basically the the lab test dummy so i would do facebook lives and people i was getting a lot of engagement because there's a lot of people particularly because texas it's not legal um right. so people don't have like you know uh bud tenders or whatever to help them understand <laughs> what strains are good for indica sativa and so with all that and get, and I really enjoy doing it. So that's how it started. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you enjoy it. And let's start out with here. Let's toast right now and smoke oh. a little uh, of the herbal blessings. My first guest I had on here and did an interview with Nick Wade, who's one of my favorite authors and a smoker. Cheer! Can we can we make it look like it? Cheers. Like uh, oh. Okay. Now we're just swinging. Now we're crossing swords. Just we've already gotten on a hand. And we ain't smoked yet. To be honest, I'm high. Yeah. You look high. I it. Who told you? <laughs> Just looking at your face. No, I mean, I got one of those faces. Your hair tells it all. What are you smoking, sir? Um, so, like you said, we don't have bud tenders here in the great state of Texas. But for what I was able to um, ascertain, I love is that word. Look out. You did a little uh, detective work. That's awesome. <laughs> this is a lemon skunk is what they called it. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I love all Tell lemons. Are you, are you smoking a blunt? I am. It's a little uh, Swisher Diamond Mini. Of course you are. It's kind of how I like to take it on up. And then, have you ever tried the king? Have you ever, oh, shit. I almost set my shit on fire. Don't do that. But this is There's a lot of wood. What's a little oh, nice. look like? Oh, that's pretty. Pretty green. Hold it still real quick. That would look nice, man. Is it an indica or sativa? I, think it's it's a, I assume it's an indica because it's a it's a, a kush. You said kush, right? Lemon kush? Or what'd you call it? Skunk. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a I I'm gonna guess that's an indica. Um it looks really green and tasty. How's it taste? It's pretty delicious. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I I, I message you Pardon me. It pairs well with the coffee, everything like the wrap, the, the oh, flour, sugar. the coffee. Oh yeah, coming together. Have you, have you seen? I'm a huge cannabis and coffee fan. In fact, I just had a sponsor. I'm wanting to do a sponsorship. Their coffee company. And a couple weeks ago, I did both a review on the cannabis and the coffee they sent me. It was delicious. Uh, nice. It's called the Goat, and it was like a dark chocolate tobacco. And then uh, Saturday, my homie's coming over, and we're going to do an outside interview, I hope. And uh, I'm going to do uh, Sumatra, which won, like, international awards. But I love coffee and cannabis. <laughs> I'm into that. Um, good combination. I used to dress, so probably back in my early 20s, I used to 
I used to give my, I call her my neighbor because I used to live out in the middle of nowhere and my only neighbor we had growing up was there and she was the old lady burning all the time and her kids turned me on. Moving to the city, Corpus Christi, uh, you know, like 10 years down the way and somehow we reconnected. We ended up like in a band and I was rehearsing in her garage and we were jamming. And oh, she's cool. like, hey, you know, you can jam. Every once in a while, I might need a ride to work. She worked at the butcher shop. She's just like tearing apart the meat. But she's like, I got to be there at like five in the morning. Do you think you can give me a ride? And I'm like, you know what, Olivia, you know, for you, sure. You know, I'm, I'm not doing anything at that time. I'll get up. And she's like, thanks, neighbor. I'll spark it. We'll go. Every morning I showed up. So this was back in the day. She would fill out those big uh, swisher, like the full size swisher. Uh -huh. Boom. Uh, chocolate. And she always liked chocolate, the chocolate wraps. So she had a chocolate blunt in the morning, cup of coffee for me. and Nice. We'd, yeah, we'd watch the news, get super baked, and I'd just drive her all the way out to the <laughs> – the, um, that's awesome plan. i love it early more i get up early mornings now too though but coffee and cannabis is just uh they go really well together and there's studies that have been done why it's the caffeine mixture with the thc uh and there's some that the you know we have the cannabinoids in our bodies that is why we are meant to smoke thc to smoke cannabis because we have receptors in them that's why we feel good um uh -huh. And the way the receptors that the caffeine hits, I guess they mix. Uh, I, I've read a lot of articles on it. I'm really high right now. I just know I like it. Um, <laughs> and I, know, I don't know. I don't remember the exact science of why those two go together so well. But it was an interesting article. If anyone's interested, I'm sure Google knows. Um, or if you're afraid of Google, um, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever the cucks use. Uh, Big brother or, knows. I'm sure Parler has a search engine. <laughs> so was Anywho. I was like, I could remember what the name was. I was like, parrots, <laughs> punctures. Parlor. It's, it's parlor. Thanks. Um, what brought you to Austin from uh, Corpus Christi? The music, man. Um, I was already in and out of rock and roll bands uh, down there in the South. And uh, coming up to Austin and playing gigs during like Free Week or South By was like a big deal. Um, because you knew there was a lot of people back then coming in and everybody wanted to see indie bands or whatever. And it's so wild, man, because we were really like cutting our teeth in kind of a different way. And this was maybe like 10 years ago, 2011, 2020 or so, uh, 2012 or so. Uh, it was so much harder to put live music up on, or to record yourself, first of all. It was just super hard to do that. Oh, and, yeah. To make discs, because you know not everybody had Spotify ten years ago. Yeah, and uh, who did? Nobody did. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a totally different game nowadays. But it was it's the music. Right. You know, I was already coming in and out of Austin to play gigs, and I was like, okay, it's just easier if I live here, and then start yeah. going further from there, calling this kind of like a hub or the the home base. Nice. How long ago? So when did you move here? Um, I think I just hit my six-year mark, maybe. Oh, nice. Like a resident how, long have, <coughs> how long have you been playing guitar? I started playing when I was about 13, and I just turned 31 last July. I'm getting there. Oh, wow. You look – I didn't we're think you were that, uh, that old. You're still way younger than I am, so fuck off. Yeah, um, we're, all, we're all still way younger than you are. <laughs> that, hurt my, that hurt my feelings. Aha! I don't. I don't have any feelings. You're lucky today. I left. I left my feelings in the suburban getting two tires because I had a lot of feelings then. Um, were you born with one hand, or did you have an? You were. No. Yes. Yes. I absolutely was. Uh, this is how I came out. Uh, right out of the mother's womb. Um, and it freaked a lot of people out too because I was the. Uh, I was the firstborn. Firstborn son. It's me. And uh, I was like, oh shit! It's the late '80s. People are like, oh my god. What is, you know, they, they sat my mom down or they, they, they came and they talked to her. This is, I ask her about it. I only ask her about it on my birthday. I'm like, tell me the story of my birth. And she's like, well, to be honest, there was uh, complications going on. They said that she was all, they stuck her in one room the whole time. They didn't even, she didn't have a clock. There was a TV um, and just people kept coming in, talking to her, asking her questions, taking her vitals, giving her whatever kind of drug she was on. And then it'd go away, come back until it was time. Uh, she didn't even know what day my birthday was until, you know, she got mm. home and Damn. sealed it all out. And that was, but they thought that there was something wrong. Uh, was this just because it didn't seem like in the late 80s, not having a hand would be that shocking. 
Right, right. So, what, yeah, what they called it was, um, it was more shy, I guess, for my family, because, you know, you see it happen to everyone right. else. It never happens to you. And then, but um, they ended up, they, the diagnosis was Poland syndrome, is what they call it. So, mm. it's just, uh, it's a one in a X amount birth defect uh, that just, it uh, has to do with, like, underdeveloped limbs, um, pectoral muscle here, I don't have. So, I have, like, a pec muscle here, but not oh. here. It's kind of it's kind of concave. You ever seen me without a shirt off? That's what I look like. Um, oh, and my uh, kidney on my right side doesn't work so well. So I drink a lot of water in between the IPAs. I mean, that's just that's just science. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I this is what out. I really am curious about. Now I know that it, you, you were born without the hand. And now I, I have both my hands. Um, nice. So this is all going to be my <laughs> opinion <laughs> and, and, and thought process here. But it would be to me if I was if you if I was you and I had one hand, like becoming a guitar god, Ooh. seems like it would be the, an extra challenging dream to have. Just to to, to master the guitar if you ever can master it. Um, maybe Eddie Van Halen future, did. Man. Yeah, but you're so good. So, what was? Uh, can you just share like? what your inspiration was to do it and what your, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do it anyway. Cause that's the sh kind of shit that makes people dick get hard. Uh, vaginas get wet. Uh, wow. People that have two breasts, their nipples get hard. <laughs> um, so what was that like? When, when, when did you know that you were going to pick it up? Uh, that's, I don't know. That's kind of, a, I guess that's kind of interesting. Uh, I have an uncle of mine who uh, was doing the whole rock and roll. My mom's brother was doing the whole rock and roll thing. Mm. And we just kind of knew in the family, he was the one who was already living in Austin and he was the weird one. And he would only come down once every four holidays or something like that. Um, but when he did, he brought his guitar. And uh, it all starts with rock and roll, I guess. Uh, so I, my, first of all, I guess my dad was always listening to like Iron Maiden, old school Metallica, stuff like that. Um, all great stuff. All that good stuff, but really, that's kind of what you know. One thing my dad got right. Um, so yeah. Hey, my so, my dad listen. My dad listened to gospel, so shit. And not good gospel, right there, Southern Baptist gospel, where they like you don't even sway. That's my drummer's story. There, he comes from uh, <coughs> that kind of family. Mm. But um, so I guess there was kind of music in my family like that because like, now thinking about it, my grandfather only had one arm. He had his arm ripped off in a, he was a loser, man. So he was driving back in his early 20s and his, boom, his arm got ripped off. But he, wow. was, an, he was an accordion player and he was a guitar player for an uh, old school Spanish band. They called themselves the Morticians. So he had old equipment in the back room at my grandmother's place. There hung an old shitty crummy guitar. I kind of took down... And I remember sitting it in my lap in the hallway. There's everybody doing family stuff there. And I kind of just had this little moment where I sat it down. And I kind of thought I was going to use, I don't know if you can tell, but it like this point, it points here. And it's, there's bone here. And I'm like, oh, this is, um, this is what I'm going to use to pick. And I thought I was going to use this kind of motion. And when I sat the guitar down in my lap for the first time, I always just kind of laid there with it, kind of laid, you know, lay it down, strings up, pluck at it. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit it down in my lap and hold it like the way I'm supposed to hold it. This part, I don't know if you can tell here, but it's like, if you look at your wrist, it's the point where your wrist actually wrists and then you have this kind of ball on your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your palm here. And the thumb? Uh, right, under, right, yeah, under, right underneath the yeah. thumb. But it ends up being the um, underneath the pinky is how it ends up working. And... Ah. Uh, yeah, that kind of it kind of comes out a little bit. I sat, I sat the that guitar bone, down. Right? Are you talking about? You talking about this? Well, so that's the part that I thought I was going to use. Oh, okay, okay. And then but you used that's under the part. I ended up using. Ah. And, um, I was able to hit each string individually, and I was just kind of fretting around. And then that was that. I was like, okay, it's this shitty guitar, or nothing. My family's poor. Like, I'm not gonna. They're not gonna buy me a guitar. To especially it's like I come from a Hispanic family and um, kind of I guess like third generation and just to for a family to be like hey this is 
something that we could invest in that little child might be it's just it's not the first thing on the list you know of shit that they got going on um i got lucky enough that the little school i was going to was like hey we're gonna offer guitar lessons you get a guitar issued to you and nice that's how i got and my dude the school i was at was so tiny there was me and like Five this is a good time. This is a good time to uh, tell to to remind folks why it's so important uh, to support the arts and in, in our schools and everything. <laughs> there could be a better time to mention it than right now. And, you know, and for that's those so of you wild. that don't, yeah, I mean, but there's so many, and I know people that don't. I uh, don't think that they're important. And uh, imagine if we didn't, we wouldn't be. We, would, we might still be having this discussion, but. Um, that's, you might you know, not be shredding like you do. That's a you might not thing. be living your dream right now. They taught me how to, um, the, what I learned from that was that I learned the names of the strings and I was, uh, they learned, uh, I learned how to tune it and what a chord was and how to read the chord thing, the chord little diagram. And then from there, it was like, okay, well, they taught me jingle bells. Beep, 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 And I, I went to my dad who, didn't play, didn't know anything about playing music. Hey dad, what are some good, uh, I'm trying to learn the guitar. You know, they look, they give, they give me a guitar at school. I want to, what do you think I should learn to play? And uh, he says, learn some Nirvana. And so I learned every track from start to finish of the Nirvana Unplugged. Me and a guitar. And I just, that's the how, that's how I learned how to play guitar. Why, why don't you play a, uh, I don't know if you can play that actually. Well, I don't know. Um, so I was gonna. I wanted to have you play. Are you open to playing? I can play something. I just I thought about like, um, if it, is it like copyrighted or something like that? Um, play? you know what? I can just dick around and play something that's just you know. Not yeah, like, I don't think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Um, the only time I've ever got uh, censored was when I had Missy Elliott playing in the background. Can you work it? Gonna work it. Gonna Boom, stand down, take it, then reverse it. And then uh, YouTube censored me. Um, let's go for it. Okay. Play whatever you want. Let me, let me, let me see if I can reach it. Yeah, man. I mean, we can't, I can't just say that we can't just talk about you being a guitar player and people be like, well, you could just be making it up. Fake news. Let's show the scientific evidence, yeah. shall we? Put you back in. We believe it or not, I've never done anything like this. I've never had what are you need for like um, wireless headphones. Oh, what are so you I, using for your headphones? Computer. Are they also your microphone? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's this you, thing did here. you check your laptop? Are you using a laptop or a phone? No, this is a, a computer, like a Mac. Computer. Make sure that that's what your audio is using. Um, I don't know if you know how to check that or not. Um, I just had to go through a whole thing. Um, you're a little scratchy. That's why I ask. So it might be your computer audio that's actually uh, recording you versus the audio that's on your head, your headphones. Is it tap, 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 tap? Yep, got it. Okay, so what should I do oh, with this guy? Cool. Can you put it up, maybe tuck it into the collar of your shirt? No, no, that's dumb. That's not going to work. Uh, it's fine. Actually, it'll be just fine. What, okay, well, what does this sound like? Beautiful. Really good. Um, yeah, that sounds better than I thought it was going to. Holy crap. Yeah, what is this? Uh... Yeah, man. I don't know. I've been um, service and center. Just been trying. To... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, take the mic out of your shirt. Yeah. Oh, it sounds good when you're playing, but when you're <laughs> then when you're messing with the guitar, it's like. <laughs> I see. Uh, so how does it? Just, can you hear me talking? It's like fine. That? Okay. Just good. And that sounds okay. Yep. Man, next thing on my list of crap to get is um, I, I need like an actual interface that I can just like. Plug into yeah, like a four a four um, a four channel mixer. I've seen them on Amazon, pretty inexpensively, and I think Discount Electronics might have, uh, or not Discount Electronics. What's the one on uh, Oldorf and South Lamar? I don't know. I've I've been to Discount Electronics. I think this is where we got the the computer from here. Oh, nice. <laughs> I bought. I got my keyboard. I'm I'm not in my office. I have 
a different uh, monitor, a bigger monitor, because I'm getting old and I'm a writer and I need, and I still have to enlarge the sheets. Um, but so I use a, my keyboard versus a laptop and a mouse. I got all that. I, I've got a lot of shit at discount electronics and, uh, and it all, and it all is good. <laughs> I've been using some of the shit like for years. Hanging up yeah, they the do. Wall. Yep. Yep. That's yep. They I do. Um, I thought about getting a four channel mixer. The only thing different is I I'm using a plug and play microphone, so it doesn't need to go into one. Um, and I can't until I have actual live interviews, I can't control your voc your audio anyway. You know, right. so I don't need one until I can do these live. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Saturday, I'm going to try it out outside by the pool where we can sit distance. I'm going to try a two camera thing. I don't know, man, I'm learning all this shit as I go. Um, but I've had some cameramen like did the, the film, the opening, um he used to be a newsman cameraman and he did film the opening and he helped us out so we want to do some um plant-based stoner food uh cooking segments with diane because uh as you know oh. we see you all the time uh we're not, we don't eat meat or anything and she and diane is just a, an amazing cook and baker and everything she does is uh animal product free and it's really good so i thought about doing a segment with that so he my cameraman friend showed me like how to use iphone and then use my camera and I'm sure I'm gonna fuck it up, but um, I don't. Is, I don't give. That's a shit. awesome, man. That's the kind of stuff I wish I could do. For some reason, I was like, "Hey, I'll be in charge of that stuff." During when the pandemic started, and the band was like, "Well, shit, we can't do stuff like that now." And I was like, "Well, I'll be yeah. in charge of putting together videos and editing uh, content and stuff like that." I tell you what, I Art, I didn't want to do it, and, and I just learned it. I uh, I got Adobe Premiere. I spent. Uh, the first, like you just talked, you mentioned the, the interview with Joe, I just released this past uh, yesterday. Well, okay. this is going to come out next Wednesday. So the one I released last Wednesday, and I had done his interview over the summer, um, and he was out in Mainer, and his roommates don't like uh, cannabis smoke so he had to drive in the mainer to use wi-fi like the mcdonald's sitting in the parking lot Whoa. but then when traffic would start coming through he'd get scratched so he's literally driving around while we were interviewing so there's a lot of uh, i'd i'd basically spent 25 hours editing that video because there were so many cutouts that i had to like you know uh transition and some of them i had to i missed whole parts of stories that were great so i was learning how to make i made a little video of a 3d taco because he was talking about fighting a large taco in the alley in Maynard. <laughs> and, and I just did audio over the video, like, well, we left. This is what Joe was talking about. And then it goes right back in. So there's all these transitions, but I couldn't, every time I'd export it, uh, when it rendered, the audio would come unsynced from the lips. And wow. for months, I couldn't get it to work. And so I literally am editing this on Windows 10, photo editing software which is so basic and they have some that's why my videos are pretty basic but i've learned i've mastered got it pretty mastered and i'm about to go into some other cool. yeah um it's just a learn and, and it was all learning and there was one time a point i had to shut my laptop and i didn't go back to it for 11 days because i knew if i did i was going to throw it out the window um or get and, and cause i was just so frustrated because of that rendering and, and it had basically just been learning how to do this and asking questions of people that do it and um uh, and figuring it out and, and so it, it has been really cool to learn a new um a new skill set over the pandemic and put it to use you know doing this so that that has been great and it's also challenging and uh and i'm also just like i like learning so even though i'm an old man now i, I appreciate the fact that i'm still pretty open to learning and uh and much more chill about it than in one of my previous uh, in my thirties, twenties, <laughs> where I just would break shit because I get so frustrated. Um, so what got you, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know now that I've heard, you know, your uncle lived here. Is he the first person to introduce you to, uh, cannabis? He sounds like the kind of uncle that would. Yeah, that's how that happened, man. Um, he gave me the, uh, it started with Beatles for sale. And I was like, this is the Beatles? And he's like, well, 
And then he gave me this. What's cassette. a Beatle? Yeah. <laughs> oh. He gave me he gave me the cassette, man, and on the cassette it had all the weird songs. It was you know I'm the Walrus, Strawberry Fields. Oh no no no. I'm sorry, I didn't. I wasn't clear. I said, is he the one that introduced you to marijuana? Oh, yeah. That's uh, it, because of because of those weird tunes that you know. Oh, like, I see. I see. You were continuing. It, yes. It it goes. It, it you know it comes with this. But no, I guess first I was. I guess I was kind of getting stoned with my old school neighbors, though, man. They would oh, nice. have old school. Um, you know, make sure you pick out all the seeds. Uh, oh yeah, I remember those days. It came in a brick, you know. You, it was you scored a twenty dollar a twenty dollar bill got you a bag that was like, right? Ah. Yeah, man. So that those were those were the starting days. That's where I came from. Uh, nice partying out like that. Uh, but ironically, me too. In the eighties, it was a lot of I could get a couple skunks, but usually it was just some brown dirt weed that came in a brick. Uh, and it wasn't until the nineties happened that. Um, I just felt I just put out right before we were doing this. I did a little secret special Gen X episode um, where I just got I got some White Widow, which is was like hugely yeah. popular in the '90s. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, this. I remembered this because this is when shit started getting real with cannabis versus the brown uh, seeds and shit. When when it was right around White Widows, things like that started coming out where people were actually you were seeing all these like badass pictures of it, and you're like, Fuck, yeah. This yeah, not like, the shit I was getting. It got clean. Yeah. Not, not, not at that time. No, I was not. I, I would see it like High Times because uh, that was a magazine, like actual print magazine. Then the covers, you'd see like flowers and plants. I'd be like, why, why am I not getting that? <laughs> this, can't be, this can't be real. Nobody right. does not like that. This is Hollywood. Right. This shit must be $100 an eight. I'll tell you, man. I'll tell you. I, I have a story. So the first time I really got a hold of some stuff like that, and you, it's funny you say White Widow because that's that's what he said it was. I'm hanging out with my girlfriend at the time, and she and her aunt go and talk somewhere. So all of a sudden, Uncle Richard comes around the corner. And he's like, come over. You know, and I will probably, I'm probably maybe like a junior, uh, what is it? I mean, like 11th grade. What is that? Junior? Sophomore? What is that called? Yeah, 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 yeah. Junior. In uh, yeah, in high school, um, never. I had already been smoking, you know, all that, you know, regular Reggie weed. I was used to smoking big old fat blunts or whatever. Um, well, he go, we go back into his little garage, into his little tool shed, his little tiny room. We're like standing shoulder to shoulder, and he reaches up to his little bag of like dog food, dog bites or whatever, and opens it up and pulls out a little box. And in the box was the little nug, and he showed it to me, and I just, I kind of to this day man i mean i've seen a lot of good bud but maybe i had starry eyes back then but I've it was like frosty it was white. yeah it was that's the first time you're introduced to a kind yeah kind of <laughs> and he was like he's like, you had anything like this and i was like well okay and man, i became a bad yeah I remember <laughs> a little water. He had a little, little water pipe, little little water piece, uh -huh. little bubbler. <laughs> mm, mm, shit! I remember <laughs> I was in eleventh grade the first time I smoked. Um, and we went over to this kid's house, Thomas Smith, and he was a heavy set black guy. <laughs> and uh, I only mentioned that because he was a metalhead, and uh, there weren't very many black uh, metalheads yeah. in my high school. And I was a punk rock kid. And he had a big biker leather jacket and he wore it all the time and smelled like he did. And he had a, a skunk weed and he hot boxed me. Like, uh, that's the first time I got high. I didn't even, he just blew it through the joint, uh, hot box out of the back, through into my face, into my mouth a couple times. And I was just shit baked. Um, and that's, that is, that was, I was about 16 in 11th grade. So that was 32 years ago. <laughs> and here we are. What are you about to play for us, Jesse? Oh, uh, I'm so high right now. I forgot what we were even doing. I'm looking at you I, holding you know, the guitar. I I'm like, well, what a great that. picture. I just all of a sudden I was thinking back to the good, those those days. Yeah, man. I mean, I played in a band called Blotterhead. It was a hardcore punk band. Um, except 
you know, normally the aggression you would see. And I could not uh, play not high because we practiced high all the time, kind of that state dependent learning. And yeah. so I remember being so stoned one time I couldn't get the mic out of the mic stand, the whole set. Like I went a punk, fast punk set and I was just carrying the mic around to the stand because I couldn't get the fucking mic out. I thought they had fucking with, they were fucking with me. I'd just be so high. So you were the um, singer? Yeah, I was. Cool, yeah, yeah. rad. Yeah, can you know, come to think of it, I guess I do see you in like the coming in like DRI shirts and stuff like that. Uh, coming in with the what shirts? Like, yeah, you wear like DRI. Yeah, I've seen you. Yeah, yeah, I'm an old. I grew up uh, 80s, 90s. I got, I was really in the mid, uh, late 80s, got into punk, um, Circle Jerks, Black Flag, and Misfits, and also a lot of, you know, a lot of crossover into uh, Thrash, DRI, and, 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 um, Megadeth at the time, Metallica, all that stuff, and uh, that also really my older brother was like a, uh, a, a, a flowing long uh, mullet metalhead, like bangs uh, frosted, and uh, he used to be in the '80s stuff a lot, but he also got me into like Judas Priest and Motley Crue and I do uh, like old Motley, Motley Crue. Crue, yeah, and um, and uh, Iron Jasper Maiden up. and a lot of that shit so um and i still listen to a lot uh, i still i listen to a, 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 a definitely a lot i have a, a a wide spectrum but at heart i'm still a, a punk rock uh, metal kid and that's the kind of shit that I, I listen to most of the time because uh, i like the way it makes me feel it's good stuff man uh, i definitely yeah. that that's where i come from too that was my first band that really uh, had real success was we were like a little punk thrash band we were like kids making noise playing fast and hard it's easy to it's e it's it's easy as a child i found to learn um if you're playing that because a lot of it especially i learned on the bass and it was pretty uh like three note four note songs just strumming real fast and yeah. um it was a good good way for me to learn uh, on the bass and then i i left that and, and started singing screaming um because that didn't take any real talent at all. I just had, a, I have energy and, and charisma, but uh, I'm not a good singer. Um, uh, I kind of Rob have a Dan, a Dan Ziggy kind of, because uh, I learned, I grew up, started singing based on Elvis and Danzig from the Misfits. Um, and so it's kind of a mix of that and then shouting like a uh, typical hard, hardcore band. Very, we got compared back in the day to Cro-Mags a lot. Uh, you know, Cro-Mags, Age Cro of Coral. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's what that was. And then and we were honored to ever have that comparison because that's one of uh, Age of Coral's one of, uh, was a life-changing, uh, life-altering record for me back in the 80s. Um, but yes, they're nice dudes. That's man. my scene uh, anyway. What's the that? Cro the guys from Cro-Mags, they're really they're nice. They're, uh, oh, well, they're, I mean, besides their, the, uh, Harley was, uh, says he started it, John Joseph says he started, so they've been fighting for years over who owns the name. And I've seen them both, both with Harley leading it and with John Joseph. So now they just settled it. I believe Harley won rights to it. Um, but now because of that, it's on streaming services and shit. Now that the law, now that it's over, it was, it's been like that for like 20 years. Um, and I've, uh, Smoked a blunt with Harley in Cleveland at a show. Um, and John Joseph, I hung out in like 1999 in New York City um, at a show. And I, I love them both. I saw them at Fun 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 Fest. They played here. The first year I moved here, um, 2013, Fun 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 Fest. And I had a press pass. And John Joseph and the Crow Mags played on the black stage. And it was awesome. And Judge played. Yeah. And... Uh, body count played and uh black uh or flag played with keith morris black uh but they couldn't call themselves black flag of course right but, yeah it was great to see those bands anyway dude um, that um those were the days man that's when it was happening uh, those were the days i'd seen yeah, judge at a ymca before and now seeing him on stage at fun 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 fest uh that was something to behold that was a lot of fun so what up uh, Man, I keep getting on it. And I can tell when you guys look up Day Eater, uh, they are definitely a, I don't, uh, it's, you're definitely metal and hard. I'd say it's your guy, I compare you guys like hard rock, um, absurdish metal kind of. Um, and you guys are just, I think you're a lot of fun. Uh, you, you're, you're, you definitely rock the fuck out. And you're definitely some stoner rock for sure. Um, 
uh, here's a here's a interesting goes well little, with cannabis. Here's an interesting little fun fact um, about myself, uh, cannabis uh, related. I like to look for pieces that are very one hand friendly. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? So you can um, like grip it in your mouth. Well, I mean, so I hold and like this, uh-huh. but I don't have to worry about a carb, like a side carb. Um, there's one pipe in particular that I like. Um, it's a spoon, but the carb is in the front and it's a small little, you know, regular shaped carb, but it's a spoon bowl and it's long. It's called the super phantom. And those mm. have been my favorite kind of pipe, but that's something I kind of look for when, uh, yeah, I know. I wouldn't even think of that. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, I I did, cause everything's got a carb. Yeah. I do have a spoon. We do have a spoon around here somewhere that we use that it's actually a uh, day eater wrote it one on our very first album wrote a song uh about i don't know why we called it the album but for some reason this we got this pipe yes yeah, so that's oh that's the one you're talking about it's got a carb on the no that's it kind of looks regular like it. there it is yeah i don't use it as much but uh data wrote a song called albino sister about a white version of this pipe that kind of cracked and broke and mm. i was like oh it was the albino sister and so Dater has a song called Albino Sister. <laughs> so, I just that'll, get you, that'll get you canceled. You're canceled, sir. It's all over for you. you. <clears throat> I keep fucking coughing. I can't even smoke my joint yet. Here, uh, let's see if I can't fumble through. Uh, fumble through. Um, fumble through this here. All right, go ahead. Go for it, brother. Does that sound okay? Yep. Yeah, hold on one second, Jess. You got the, the you got to move that mic. It's just oh. rubbing. Yeah, it's it's scratching through the music. Let me see. Let me see. Let me or see. if you could not lean on it. Let me see here. Let me. What if I? Uh, what if I get this going on here? Yeah, man. I'm telling you. I, uh, let's see what. Uh, ooh. 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 Okay. 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 Um. Okay. How's that sound? <laughs> I'm sorry. It sounds good. I'm laughing. I'm like, man. I'm causing. I'm getting Jesse all kind of work through. Hey, get stoned and then move around a bunch and try yeah. not to try not to try to make try this good for all seven friends. people that are going to watch it. <laughs> hey, I saw how many views your last one had. I was like, <clears throat> I made sure to smash that like button. Nice. I appreciate it. <laughs> Instagram definitely is better. Let's see, here we go. Well, she's walking through the clouds with a circus mind that's running wild. Butterflies and zebras and moonbeams and a fairy tales riding with the wind. Lord, when I'm sad, she comes to me with a thousand smiles. She gets to me free. It's alright, she says, baby. It's so very alright. You take anything you want from me. So on and so forth. Cool, man. Hell Every man. time you lean over, when you lean over, it starts scratching again. But it's it was kind of uh, great anyway. It was really really good. Even better. What if you <laughs> ate it and swallowed it, and then Same we the stopped throat. recording and we just waited for you to for it to go through your system and you pooped it out. That sounds like a, a whole, pay-per-view event. It does. We could hear the whole process. Uh, I mean, you'd have to stay plugged in, I guess, uh, for that entire time. It could take days. There is that weird Maybe cat video again. that's like that. Is there? <laughs> yeah, man. The internet's a weird place. 
Oh shit! I'm not looking at the right videos up in this piece. But you know, I don't. Yeah, I don't go looking for them. They just kind of. It, it's always oh, that I thing get it. where, it's, where it's like um, warning. It may contain uh, uh, subjective imagery, and I'm like, well, uh, yeah, I'll see. Yeah. It. Oh, of course. Well, oops. What a teaser to kids too. Like, uh, if you see that, of course you're gonna watch it. You know what yeah, I mean? It's true. Don't watch, don't watch this. Well, an asshole like me means, okay, well, I have to watch it. Now it's got some good shit in it. It's like when they put the parental advisory on the yeah. record. I'm like, oh. I mean, I do, when I post these on YouTube, I, uh, I do, I restrict them uh, to anyone under 18. I feel like that's my, uh, uh, that's me being responsible. They, yeah, you're paying your society, man, taking care of us. Well, I'm like I'm I'm like Jesus that way. I think, uh, just just different. Um, God, I'm high as hell. So, when you generally smoke, does the rest of the ah, we got high after you guys were done playing at a uh, little darling that time? We I remember sure now. Did. Yeah, we probably did. did. That was a good uh, gig. So in, Looking back on it all now, now that it's all over, that was a good gig. That was fun, man. We I mean we didn't get to do it this year because of the pandemic. So that was one of our, we, all of our events got canceled this year. That kind of, that's rough, but that's my favorite event. Uh, um, it's just fun. And, uh, and, and you were one of the reasons why it was a blast. Um, what is your, do you have a favorite uh, strain of cannabis? Um, like if it's did, around, you want to get it. I did for a while. Well, I think it was called headband. Hmm. Oh, um, and for some reason, it so this is gonna sound weird, but it gave like the it's tuna, you know. I like burned it, and I was like, this "Oh, like, like tuna. tuna?" Yeah, I don't know. I like. Oh wow! Tuna. Yeah, and so that's it. For some reason, that kind of stuck with me. Uh, I know I've never. I've had a lot of different flavor profiles. Tuna has not been one. Oh yeah, man, tuna. I've also had some kind of bud that's tasted like meat before. I've like, mm. oh, this tastes like meat. There's a there's one uh, called dog shit that supposedly uh, tastes and smells like dog shit. Somebody had asked me like, "Would you try that?" And I was like, "Of course I would." <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's uh, uh, that's like putting the 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 parent parental warning on it. <laughs> it smells like dog shit. That's horrible. Like that. Yes, yeah. I want to try it. Of course, I want to try that's it. So uh, just so I can say I did. I've experienced a lot of things that were unpleasant in my life just to have the experience. Lord knows I've eaten some things I knew were going to be gross, but I was like, well, I want to, I want to try this um, yeah. and have that experience. So yeah, I would do some dog shit. I forgot to even mention what I'm smoking. It's a, uh, what am I smoking? Juicy Jack. So uh, no. one of my favorite strains all time is Jack Hare. And uh, okay. I l love Jack Hare. It's really good for me. It's one of that I can, I can write on, I can write content on, I can do, I can work on, I can be effective on. It's a good sativa balance. Um, <laughs> and so <clears throat> a couple months ago, I think I did Super Jack, uh, which was a, a hybrid using Jack hair and Juicy Jack is Juicy Fruit. Uh, it's one of the strain, parent strains and Jack hair is the other one. So it's really got a juicy fruit like flavor. That's why the other one had the name. Uh, so I, I love really fruit. I love citrusy, like your lemon uh, skunk. I would, I'm sure those are two odd pairings. Um, but I love both skunks. So skunks like a little disrespectful and lemon is citrusy. I, but I love those two together. Uh, I do like the smell of a good skunk, you know? Yeah. We it's weird. Well, it, it's a, I say there's one thing in life I don't mind being disrespected by and that's my cannabis. Like if it's <laughs> funky and stink, like, I'm like, okay. Uh, cause I, I know it's going to be good. Um, and if it's got that cheesy funk, you know what I mean, you know, uh, I, I'm like, good, oh, this, yeah. That's a good I'm way to like, describe. Oh, this shit smells offensive, like disrespectful. Like then I'll listen. I did that on video the other day. I listened to it. I was like, this shit it's made fun of my mama. Like it's disrespectful. <laughs> and I, so I love that. Um, and I love smoking those as well. And I also, but I also love the citrus part. Like citrus always just leaves a very good, pleasant flavor profile in in one's mouth in my mouth so uh that would be an interesting smoke to me this one's fruity um 
it's really just got a lot of fruity florally um uh, sense uh, similar to a uh, jack hair just more fruity and uh, i'm all about it i just got it um a couple days ago and uh i'm loving it i think it's fucking great i love but jack hair is one that one of my favorites of all time so whatever it's whatever somebody wants to play around with it i'm down to uh i'm down to put it in my face last week i had um so they, they called it gorilla glue Yes, I've done a review on Gorilla Glue. That's one of my favorites, too. I have right now, um, it's Forbidden Glue. And it's, I thought there was a strain I got. It was a hard, a hard indica over the summer. It was called Forbidden Fruit. And it was like super, super dark um, purple flower. It was amazing looking. It was super funky. And I really liked it. So this Forbidden Glue came. And I had Gorilla Glue recently. Um, that I did a review on and so I thought it was a forbidden fruit mixed with gorilla glue because it's a really dark flower also but it's not it's a different one they just called it forbidden glue because it's the same color as forbidden, forbidden fruit but I'm looking forward to it gorilla glues gorilla glues uh, a fantastic strain I love uh, and it's an indica but I like to, I smoke that shit during the day whenever it's really good crunch you out gets me high as fuck that's why i mean that's that's my end all uh, uh rating system is does this motherfucker get me high yeah for real <coughs> that's why i don't <laughs> smoke cbd <clears throat> but i have you some cbd creams <laughs> <on> my... <laughs> there's this great instagram you guys watching this follow called cbd kills at cbd kills on instagram and it's hysterical and it's all just memes about CBD killing children and, 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 and all these funny things, but it's, it's, they're out of their goddamn minds and it's pretty funny. The funny thing is that I'll share something and buy stories from them and then I'll get fucking people in all up in my DMs, uh, like arguing and shit. And I'm like, it's a fucking satire site. <laughs> Little Timmy didn't die after he smoked the CBD. <laughs> That's like, the, it, it looks like, you know, it looks like the real deal. I've seen some. Oh, yeah. Like, that, that's why I got decriminalized here because it's too expensive. And now because CBD is legal and you can have the flower. So if you get pulled over, uh, they have to do an actual, they have to take it back and have a lab test it. And it's so expensive. That's one of the big reasons why it's decriminalized, why, can't, why TH, uh, cannabis is, uh, uh, with THC is decriminalized now in Austin because they said they wouldn't pay to have it done. It was just way too expensive. Um, and so now it's decriminalized here. You can have under two ounces, not even a civil penalty, uh, but, uh, a, a Senator elect that just got elected the Senate, state Senate, um, already put in a bill, um, to legalize and already has a lot of backers in, 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 uh, our state legislator to, to, to legalize at least medical, um, yeah. this year in, in, in Texas and my God. I mean, the Dakotas, uh, Montana legalized cannabis. Come on, man, Texas. We are just, it's so dumb. And we're, and we're always talking about bringing business here for the economy. Texas is, is more land than anything else. There, you know how much cannabis could be grown in this state? Um, There's a lot of land up there. A lot of fucking land in Texas. If you've ever driven from the West Coast, I mean, this is how big it is. It starts on the West Coast and ends on the East. <laughs> the, the southeast starts in the southwest and southeast the big That's motherfucker true. uh and it's all god it's all land on route 10 from uh, uh for, from getting into the state until uh, going into louisiana are you from texas land no i'm from cleveland Cle uh, yeah, ohio okay. if you're not in cleveland cincinnati toledo uh columbus um dayton it, it's all cow pastures ohio yeah, if, if you're not in, that, that, the not Drew Carey show. Yeah, uh, Drew Carey is a a very very uh, well loved um, celebrity in Ohio and other places too. But Ohio, uh, <laughs> very proud of him. That's good. Very very proud of him. Yeah, uh, yeah. I used to enjoy that show when I was a, a, a younger folk. It was um, on. What else do you want? You, do you want to play another song for us? I'm over here straight stone chilling. Yeah, uh, you know, same. Um, this, this chair is really is really good for that. Now I see why Joe enjoyed sitting in it. What was? Um, yeah, see now I'm all I'm all baked as fuck. There was a misfit song I was. Playing. Oh, come on with it! Come on with it! I don't remember this. Oh, 
let me see. See if maybe, maybe, maybe I can do that. <laughs> how, how does the fucking verse? Is it skull? Is it skulls? It is, and I was just like, how the hell is it even? I want your skull. Deep it I am the, if it's I feel. What is, is the first? Is the first line? What is that first line? Uh, it's like, oh, man, see that you know marijuana. I, I, the face I, I don't remember. I bet you know who knows. You know, that's the motherfucking, you know, uh, motherfucking Google knows. Every time I hang out and I'm like, oh, let's play some songs, everybody. And I'm like, the rule is you can only play songs that you know. And was like, oh, yeah, okay. And then I get the guitar and I'm like, oh, let me start to half ass a song that I fucking don't know. It's the. The corpses all hang, head listen and limp. Yeah, yeah, Bodies no. with no surprises and the blood drowned down like devil yeah. free. The yeah. well wept and I want your skull. Corpse on, corpse on high, head listen and limp. Bodies with no surprises, the blood drowns down like devil's rain. We'll bet tonight. I want, I want your skull. Like, we can't both go to the same one. I need your skull. I want your skull. I need your skull. Demon, I am a face of Gotta have you on my wall. Gotta have you on my wall. I want your skull. I love it. Uh, you like if you that. guys, you can contact Day Eater or my oh. show. Any A uh, and R people out there that are ready to to start this two this uh, two person band up? Uh, we called the 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 Stoners. That's it. That's that's enough. Um, and uh, this is all we do. We just sit around and uh, we we do misfit songs. And then I think we should do songs that we don't know. Uh, you just start like that's the kind of know how this goes. You don't know. And then I just make up lyrics to them. Like I know how the rhythm kind of goes, but just like da ba -dee -ba -dee. get some good, uh, really good at that. riffs in. Oh my god, I'm so high, dude. How how are you feeling right now? I'm doing pretty well, man. Doing pretty well. You guys don't have any. Start my Sorry, day. go ahead. I, I just interrupted you. Fuck. Well, I was just saying, you know, it's a good way to start my day. This is like the beginning of the day. I got up at about. Oh, right on. Uh, um. Where can folks, because you guys don't have any upcoming shows, I assume, um, where can folks get your, your latest record? I know you're on SoundCloud, but uh, if people want to actually buy it, do you, have a, do you have CDs out or records out, eight tracks, cassettes, what you got? Uh, we do, actually, we do. We have, uh, we have CDs, um, old school CDs, and a um, couple of uh, seven-inch vinyls. They're nice and like purple, or some of them are red, or some of them are pink. Nice. Um, oh, you are you saying vinyl? Yeah. Uh, I want like one of those. I'm going to get a vinyl. Um, I'll yeah, order one. The B side. Um, if I had one, I'd show them to you. But I don't know where they are. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't but, set uh, you up for advertising. Where can people get them? Yeah. Uh, you know, visit our website, dateorband.com. You can check all that out. Or even just giving us a follow, dateorband on Instagram, Facebook. That should help. Yeah, I'll share all that stuff for you too. Are, uh, so yeah, definitely give these guys a follow and uh, get their albums too, because uh, in their music, rock they rock. You guys got merch or anything? We do. We have like shirts and koozies and cool. things like that. <laughs> so um, awesome. And yeah, any way that you can get a hold of us, we'll get it to you. I'm sure you will. And I know when that when the opportunity arises. Um, you know it's hard right now uh when 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 shows come again i know you guys will be back out at, at it because you guys were you were it was consistently it seemed like playing out quite a bit um uh because i would see you post you know going down to corpus and playing and and um 
if you have the opportunity to see these guys, they fucking, they rock. Like I said, uh, whether or not, uh, uh, Jesse has one hand or not, he fucking shreds. The whole band is just great. Their, their shows are musically great and they're also very entertaining. And that's a, that's a, a key, uh, I don't know. That's good. That's good for stoners. That's good for just go out and enjoy rock and roll uh, with some fucking fun, some old school rock and roll attitude. And I think you guys definitely have that uh, versus just kind of standing there, you know, looking passive. You guys, uh, you guys aren't afraid to get stupid, and yeah, I enjoy. I, I enjoy you know, that. Been, uh, yeah, I like to go out there, have a good time. Yeah, you guys do, yeah. and um, so let people know. I'll, I'll post all this how you can get. Uh, pick up the, the the music from you guys and where your webs and go to your website. Uh, I I just want to thank you, man. I appreciate you doing this. I'm glad that we finally got to do it. Um, it's a beautiful day, and I just I just appreciate you giving me your time and and sharing some music and some weed and some conversation. Um, it's a it's a lost yeah, art man. in our world. So I enjoy it really, having really it. Is. Dying every day is the attempt. <coughs> Right now, you got anything else you want to say to these uh, these ass clowns watching? I'm just kidding. Um, Why would I call the people that are listening ass clowns? Your ass clown. <laughs> no, um, no, you know, just make sure to uh, clean your pieces out regularly. Don't, um, don't uh, make you have to, you have to, if it's got some seeds. Sometimes you save them, but you don't want to ever smoke them. Give it a bad cough. And always take care of yourselves. Self care. Self care is important. Thanks, Jesse. Why don't you play us out? With whatever you want to play. Uh, this little, this little lick here, this little blues lick here. <coughs> Shit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. See you, Paul. And uh, well, I'm gonna stop recording, and then I'll say bye to you. Well, we I, thought we could, I thought we could take it. We. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Uh, my bad. You're yeah. right. <laughs> oh thank you jesse uh it was great having you i appreciate you guys uh your band is great you're a great uh i appreciate you're a great you're a great um motherfucker i can't even i'm so high i don't even know you're a great person to get stoned with too. Like, me yeah. too i appreciate it you take care of yourself jess hey Let's yeah see. you too man <laughs>